So today we would look at the venous drainage of the gastrointestinal tract. In the previous lecture, we looked at the blood supply, the arterial supply of the uh, gastrointestinal tract. And in that lecture, we talked about the three regions of the gut. And we said we have the foregut, the mid gut, and the hind gut. And we said that each of these regions of the, of the gut uh, are supplied by different arteries. And we said that the foregut is supplied by the celiac trunk and its branches. And then the mid gut is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery and its branches. And then the hind gut is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery and its branches. So today we would look at the venous drainage of the gastrointestinal tract. And we would see uh, that all the arteries we discussed in the previous lecture would have, you know, uh, they are, uh, the venous aspect of those arteries, you know, so all of those organs would have veins that drain them, that takes blood away from them. And uh, almost all the, all the veins, they bear the same names as the arteries, just that now they are removing deoxygenated blood. So anytime we talk about venous drainage, remember that veins carry deoxygenated blood. When we talked about the arteries, we were talking about um, oxygenated blood, right? Being carried to the digestive system. But today we're looking at venous drainage. So we're talking about used blood, deoxygenated blood being taken away from all of these uh, digestive organs and returned, you know, uh, back uh, to the heart and then to the lungs for ox oxygenation. So let's get started. So um, let's start. The venous drainage of gastrointestinal tracts. Now, the venous drainage of the gastrointestinal tract is made up of two main uh, parts. So we have veins of the portal venous system. Remember in one of the lectures we had before, we talked about the portal vein. Today we'll talk about it a little bit again because um, it's related to today's topic. So veins of the portal venous system, and then we have the systemic veins. So venous drainage of the gastrointestinal tract is done by two sets of veins. They are veins of the portal venous system or the portal vein, and then uh, systemic veins. Now, blood from the gastrointestinal tract enter the liver. Remember, we said that uh, the liver receives double blood supply, one from the hepatic artery and the second blood supply from the portal vein or the hepatic portal vein. Now, the blood from the gastrointestinal tract enter the liver via the portal vein. So blood coming from the uh, stomach, right? The intestines, at the end of digestion, that uh, digested food is carried through the portal vein to the liver. So blood leaves the gastrointestinal tract to the liver through the portal vein. And then the blood leaves the liver through the hepatic veins to enter the inferior vena cava. So remember that um, in the gastrointestinal tract, we have different organs. We have the um, stomach, we have the intestines, we have maybe the spleen, the pancreas, and then the liver. Now, blood from the gastrointestinal tract enters the liver. So when we say blood from the GIT, we're talking about blood coming from the stomach and the intestines. It enters the liver through the portal vein, and then the blood is carried from the liver through the hepatic vein and the hepatic vein joins the inferior vena cava that returns the blood to the uh, heart. Now, if you look at this picture here, uh, you would see that 
here you have your portal vein. So this is your portal vein. In the artery, what we had was a celiac trunk. Yeah, when we're doing arterial supply, we had a celiac trunk. But now what we have here is a portal vein. So this portal vein is taking the blood into the liver. And remember, this blood is coming from the stomach and the intestine stomach and intestine and all those blood enter the portal vein from the portal vein it goes to the liver and then from the liver the hepatic vein takes the blood from the liver and then joins the inferior vena cava now um, in this diagram you will see different veins which we would discuss as we proceed here you would see um, the left gastric vein. So this is the stomach. It means that the stomach will be drained by, now watch this, stomach will be drained by the left gastric vein. What part of the stomach is that? The lesser curvature of the stomach, right? The lesser curvature of the stomach will be drained by the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein. So here you see the right gastric vein. When we were looking at the artery, we said the lesser curvature was supplied by the left gastric artery and the right gastric artery. But now this is venous drainage. So we have the left gastric vein supplying the upper part of the lesser, draining the upper part of the lesser curvature and the right gastric vein draining the lower part of the lesser curvature. Now, if you come to the greater curvature here, you will see the left and the right gastro or mental veins. Left and right gastro or mental or gastro epiploic veins draining the lesser curvature of the stomach. So the upper part here is drained by the right gastro or mental vein, while the lower part is drained by the left gastro or mental vein. So both of them join together. And um, remember that we said that this right gastro or mental vein would go and join the short um, ga gastric vein. Now, these short gastric veins here, we said are branches of splenic vein. So here you see the splenic vein. This is a splenic vein. For the arteries, we had a splenic artery and we had a short gastric arteries, right? But for now, because it is venous drainage, we're talking about this splenic vein. And this splenic vein will be joined by tributaries. That, that is the short gastric vein, the right gastro or mental vein. They all join this splenic vein. And then this splenic vein, you can see here, the splenic vein is going to join the portal vein okay and this left gastric vein also you will see is joining the portal vein so remember that left gastric vein splenic vein coming from spleen left gastric vein coming from uh left and right gastric veins coming from stomach they all join the portal vein remember that they all join the portal vein so all the digestive organs that are here blood moves from these organs and they all join the portal vein if you come down here look at this you will see the superior mesenteric vein when we're doing the artery after your celiac trunk you had your superior mesenteric artery and then you had your inferior mesenteric artery but now that it's we're doing veins we we'll have portal vein and then we have superior mesenteric vein. So this superior mesenteric vein, we said before that it would supply, uh, so it would drain. For the artery, it would supply. For the vein, it would drain. So this superior mesenteric vein is going to uh, drain the ascending colon, right, cecum, Proxima to third of the transverse colon, all of them will be drained by branches of the superior 
mesenteric vein, which are the middle colic vein and the right colic vein and the iliocolic vein. For arteries, we had iliocolic artery, right colic artery, middle colic artery, but now this is vein. So the branches of the superior mesenteric vein, or the, we don't call them branches, we call them tributaries. So remember, for arteries, we we'll call them branches. For veins, we we'll call them tributaries because they are going back to join the vein. They are not coming from the main vein. For an artery, the artery gives rise to branches, while veins are formed from tributaries of smaller veins called venules. So what we have here is iliocolic vein draining the cecum and the um, part of the ilium. The right colic vein draining the ascending colon, the middle colic vein draining the proximal to third of the transverse colon. So all these veins join the superior mesenteric vein and then the uh, superior mesenteric vein goes to join the portal vein. Yeah, and then the portal vein enters the liver and then comes out of the liver through the hepatic vein and then joins the inferior vena cava. So remember that. Then here you would find the inferior, this is the inferior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein. So inferior mesenteric vein will drain, now watch this, it will give rise to branches that will drain the distal one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid, and then the rectum and, and the anal canal. Now, so what are these tributaries of the inferior mesenteric vein? They are the left colic vein, which you would see here, the left colic vein is draining the descending colon and distal one third of the transverse colon. So all the tributaries come together and they join the inferior mesenteric vein. Then here you have your sigmoid veins. So your sigmoid veins will drain the sigmoid colon. This is the sigmoid colon here, right? And then you have your superior rectal veins also draining the rectum and the anal canal. Now we forgot to mention also branches of the uh, superior mesenteric vein, which are the jejunal and the ileal veins, which will drain the jejunum and the ileum, which is not shown in this diagram. So all of these veins from the uh, superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein, you see all of them are joining and coming to the portal vein. And then from the portal vein, they enter the liver. From the liver, the hepatic vein will carry the deoxygenated blood. And then the blood is carried to the inferior vena cava. From the inferior vena cava, the blood joins with the superior vena cava and enters the right atrium of the heart. From the right atrium to the right ventricle, from the right ventricle to the lungs for oxygenation. And then from the lungs, it comes back to the left ventricle of the heart and uh, to the left atrium and then to the left ventricle. And then it pumps out again through the aorta, right? So this is the venous drainage. Now I have explained everything. So the next slide we're gonna be looking at will just be an explanation of what I've already said. So the venous drainage of the abdominal parts of the gastrointestinal tract, the spleen, the pancreas, and the gallbladder, except for the inferior part of the rectum, is through the portal system of veins. Remember all the veins that we talked about, we said the splenic vein, right? The pancreatico duodenal vein will all the um, superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein, all of them will eventually enter the portal vein. So here, this uh, slide is saying that the venous drainage of the abdominal parts of the gastrointestinal tract, the spleen, the pancreas, and the gallbladder, except for the inferior parts of the rectum is through the portal 
system or vein. So it means that all these organs that are the gallbladder, spleen, pancreas, uh, small intestine, large intestine, they will all be drained by the portal system of veins, which I already explained, because all these veins will come and join the portal vein. Okay, now the portal vein. So the portal vein is formed by the union of the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. So the portal vein is formed by the union of the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. Posterior to the neck of the pancreas at the level of L2 vertebra. It is the final common pathway for the transport of venous blood from the spleen. So venous blood from the spleen, which we said is the splenic vein, as you can see here, the splenic vein enters, uh, joins with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. So it is the final common pathway for the transport of venous blood from the spleen, the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the abdominal part of the gastrointestinal tract. So remember the abdominal part of the gastrointestinal tract um, is drained by the superior mesenteric vein. So it means that the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein all join. So in this diagram, you will see this is splenic vein coming like this to join with the um, superior mesenteric vein. And then they form the portal vein. They form the portal vein. Now pay attention that uh, the portal vein is not joined, is not formed by the inferior mesenteric vein. Remember that the portal vein is not formed by the inferior me uh, mesenteric vein, but it's formed from the combination of the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. So if splenic vein, so what about the vein from the stomach? Remember we said the vein from the stomach would join the splenic vein. So vein from the stomach shuts gastric veins, you see short gastric veins, they will join splenic vein and the splenic vein will join superior mesenteric vein and then they form the portal vein. And remember that the uh, right and left gastric vein also join directly uh, to the portal vein. Okay. Now, so the portal vein divides into right and left branches, which enter the liver parenchyma. So here, this is the portal vein, divides into a left branch and a right branch and enters into the liver. Now, tributaries of the portal vein. So what are the blood vessels that supply blood to the portal vein that make up or that drain into the portal vein? So we have the right and the left gastric vein, which I just said. So the right and the left gastric vein, they drain directly you know, into the portal vein. So we said they drain the lesser curvature of the stomach and the abdominal esophagus. So here, uh, let me see. So this is the lesser curvature, lesser curvature of the stomach. So it will be drained by the right and left gastric vein. And both of them will drain into, into the portal. Vein. Then we we'll have the cystic vein. So the cystic vein is coming from the gallbladder. So the cystic vein is drained by the gallbladder and it drains into the portal vein also. Then we we'll have the paraumbilical vein. So the paraumbilical veins are associated with the obliterated umbilical vein and connect to veins on the anterior abdominal wall. So around the navel or the umbilicals, you find the paraumbilical veins. They also drain into the portal vein. Now remember this, don't forget this. Right and left gastric veins, cystic veins, paraumbilical veins drain into the portal vein. Now, this is very important, especially this paraumbilical vein. And I'm gonna tell you why I, I, I said that because later we're gonna look at what we call portal hypertension. And under portal hypertension, we will see the symptoms of portal hypertension. And the reason for those symptoms is because of these tributaries that are here. So 
right and left gastric vein, cystic vein, paraumbilical vein would uh, drain into the portal vein. Now, the splenic vein. So the splenic vein, as we said, um, is draining not only the spleen, because uh, branches of uh, veins or tributaries of the gastric vein also join the splenic vein. So let's look at it. The splenic vein, it, forms, it is formed from numerous smaller vessels leaving the helium of the spleen. It passes to the right, passing through the splenorenal ligaments with the splenic artery and the tail of the pancreas. It crosses the posterior abdominal wall. So the, here you see splenic artery and here you see the splenic vein running uh, posterior to the pan. This is the pancreas here. So this is the splenic vein running posterior to the pancreas, okay? And it crosses the splenorenal ligaments. So it comes here and then joins the portal vein, uh, joins the superior mesenteric vein, and then form the portal, the portal vein. And then, uh, okay, let's look at the next slide. Now, tributaries of the splenic vein. So what are these uh, veins that join the splenic vein? So we have the short gastric vein from the fundus. So the fundus and the left part of the greater curvature of the stomach, as we said, are supplied by short gastric arteries. So the veins will be short gastric veins. So these veins drain the fundus and the left part of the greater curvature of the stomach and drain into the splenic vein. Then the left gastroepiploic vein or the left gastromental vein from the greater curvature of the stomach drain into the splenic vein. And then the pancreatic veins drain the body and tail of the pancreas and drain into the splenic vein. And then we'll have your inferior mesenteric vein draining into the splenic vein. And then this splenic vein now goes to join with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. Remember I told you before that the inferior mesenteric vein is, does not form the portal vein. Why? Because the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein. Then the splenic vein joins with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein, which is what I showed you in this diagram. In this diagram, um, okay, the previous diagram, yes, this one. So this is splenic vein splenic vein. What did you notice? You noticed that inferior mesenteric vein came to join splenic vein. So this is splenic vein. Then splenic vein now joins superior mesenteric vein to form portal vein. So portal vein is formed from the union of splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein. But this splenic vein is formed from inferior mesenteric vein short gastric vein, and then right and left uh, gastric veins, right and left gastric veins. I'm sorry, short gastric vein. Don't, remember we said left and right gastric vein. Remember, right and left gastric vein drain directly to the portal vein. They don't join the splenic vein, but the, spl the Short gastric veins, short gastric veins join the splenic vein. So let me go back to that diagram and explain that again. Let me go back to that diagram. So this is a short gastric vein. This short gastric vein, right? Short gastric vein, they drain the fundus and the upper part of the greater curvature. So they join the splenic vein. So what forms splenic vein? Short gastric vein short gastric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, join uh, splenic vein, and then you have your gastro or mental or gastro epiploic, the, the right gastro, uh, sorry, the left gastro epiploic vein, left gastro epiploic vein, also join the splenic 
vein. But right and left gastric artery join portal vein directly. Okay? Good. So let's continue. So these are the tributaries of the splenic vein, short gastric vein, left gastroomental vein, pancreatic vein, inferior mesenteric vein. So it means that if anything happens to splenic vein, if the splenic vein is blocked, what do you think will happen to all of these veins? They, can't, they have nowhere to drain to. Or what will happen is if, because when all these uh, ve veins drain into the splenic vein, the splenic vein is supposed to drain into the portal vein. But if something happens that blocks the splenic vein from draining into the portal vein, it means that a lot of blood will gather in the spleen and in the splenic vein. And it means that all of these veins can no longer drain into the splenic vein because too much blood will be gathered there. The same thing would happen if there is an obstruction of the portal vein. Let me take you back again. So this is the portal vein. If the portal vein is blocked, if something blocks the portal vein and blood cannot leave the portal vein into the liver, then there's gonna be a problem because all of this splenic vein and its tributaries cannot drain into the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein cannot drain into the portal vein. So it means that blood will gather in all of these organs that are drained by these veins because they have nowhere to drain to. There's an obstruction in the portal vein. But we'll look at that later when we we'll talk about portal hypertension. Good. So superior mesenteric vein. Now the superior mesenteric vein, it drains blood from the small intestine, the cecum, the ascending colon, and the transverse colon. So of course, you know, we're talking about the proximal to third of the transverse colon. That is where the superior mesenteric vein drains from. So this is the superior mesenteric vein, and these are the tributaries of the superior mesenteric vein. So uh, it begins in the ROIF as veins draining the terminal ileum, cecum, and appendix. So it begins from uh, here, draining this region, draining this region. And then um, comes here and joins the portal, the portal vein. Then it ascends in the mesentery to the right of the superior mesenteric artery. So it's supposed to be running alongside with the superior mesenteric artery, but on the right side of the semi superior mesenteric artery will be here, while superior mesenteric vein will be here. But this diagram is showing only the uh, mesenteric vein, not the arteries. Now, what are the tributaries of the superior mesenteric vein? So they are the right gastro-mental vein. Remember that the left gastro-mental vein will drain into splenic vein. Don't forget that. But the right gastro-mental vein, right gastro-mental vein, will drain, remember the right gastro-mental vein is draining the right part of the greater curvature of the stomach. Or you can say the lower part of the greater curvature of the stomach is drained by the right gastro-mental vein. So this one joins the superior mesenteric vein. Then we have the anterior and posterior inferior pancreatico duodenal veins. They also drain into the superior mesenteric vein. And then we have the anterior superior pancreatico duodenal vein, which usually empties into the right gastro mental vein and the posterior superior pancreatico duodenal vein usually empties directly into the portal vein. So the posterior superior pancreatico duodenal vein empties directly into the portal vein while the anterior superior pancreatico duodenal vein empties into the right gastro mental vein, and then the right gastro mental vein empties into the superior mesenteric vein, and then superior mesenteric vein joins splenic vein, and they both empty into the portal, into the portal vein. So inferior mesenteric vein. Now the inferior mesenteric vein drains 
blood from the rectum, the sigmoid colon, the descending colon, and the splenic flexure. So it begins as the superior rectal vein. It begins as the superior rectal vein and then ascends receiving tributaries from the sigmoid vein and the left colic vein. So here you're supposed to see your superior rectal vein. It is not labeled in this diagram. So your superior rectal vein is supposed to be here around the rectum. And then it joins the sigmoid, uh, join the sigmoid veins. So the sigmoid veins are here, join the sigmoid veins. And then the left colic vein, because we said the left colic vein is draining descending colon. Sigmoid vein is draining sigmoid colon, and then superior rectal vein is draining the rectum. So three of them join together and then form the inferior or drain into the inferior mesenteric vein. And then the inferior mesenteric vein now joins splenic vein. And then splenic vein now joins superior mesenteric vein to drain or form the portal vein. So it joins the splenic vein posterior to the body of the pancreas. So that is the blood supply, uh, sorry, the venous drainage of the uh, digestive system. Now we are supposed to look at the portal systemic anastomosis, but I would love to do this in a separate lecture because um, I, there are some explanations I need to give about the portal systemic anastomosis. So the portal systemic anastomosis is just a connection of blood or anastomosis between the portal system or the portal venous system and the systemic veins. You know, we have systemic veins and we have portal veins. So there is a connection or anastomosis between the both of them which we would talk about in a separate lecture. The reason why we had to um, do the venous drainage of the GIT is so that when we are talking about portosystemic anastomosis, it will be easier for you to understand it. So remember the names of all the veins that we talked about today, because when we start talking about the portosystemic anastomosis, you would need to remember where they are coming from. And then uh, when we talk about portal hypertension also, you will be able to remember where they are coming from. So what do you need to know? A quick recap. What do you need to know about uh, the venous drainage of the digestive system? You need to know that the dra venous drainage of the digestive system is mainly by the portal vein and the systemic veins, the portal veins and the systemic veins. And then the portal vein we said is formed by the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. And then the splenic vein is formed from the short gastric vein, the uh, right, the left gastroomental vein, the pancreatico duodenal vein, and um, the splenic vein now joins the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And then the portal vein goes to the liver, carrying digested food products and uh, deoxygenated blood. And then uh, we said that the inferior, yeah, the inferior mesenteric vein also drains into the splenic vein. So that is all you need to know that the venous drainage is by splenic vein, um, superior mesenteric vein, and inferior mesenteric vein. But the inferior mesenteric vein joins splenic vein. By splenic vein joins superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And the portal vein enters liver from liver, hepatic vein drains the liver and uh, joins the inferior vena cava. So in the next lecture, we will look at the anastomosis between 
the portal venous system and the systemic veins. Okay, good. Do you have any question? No, no, sir. Okay, so that will be all for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you.